I'm talking as an artist, though I started out as an archaeologist a long time ago. No, I worked for 12 years as an archaeologist, but uh, in uh, 2012 I quit my job. You can hear all about that tomorrow. But um, I became an artist and I uh, went on an artist residency with my wife, Lee, and uh, we went to Fogo Island on, uh, in Canada, it's on the east coast. And there I made these drawings. Normally I would make collage work more, but they didn't have any... I thought, oh, I'll just go there and get some picture books, but they didn't have them, so... I started doing some drawing, and I... Although I'm an artist, I'm not good at hand drawing. And then I realized I have an archaeological background. I know how to draw digitally, so let's do that. So, um, this is just... Uh, these are the drawings outside, you see. And uh, I want to tell about... These are sort of stylized drawings, so they're drawn from an aesthetic pers uh, perspective. And to show you how it is, because this is what it really looks like. So if you I go back one, this is the drawing downstairs, or down in the, for you the uh, left. And when you see it, there's all stuff around it. And uh, also the next one you see, that was another drawing. I have left out all the nails. And for me, that they became aesthetic drawings. But when I look back on that, I thought the drawings make you more um, welcoming to the public. So if they see the drawings, they're intrigued, like, what is it? And then you start telling a story. And what I found is, as archaeologists, you have the tendency to dr draw everything you see. So every nail has to be counted. Everything has to be seen. And I think sometimes we lose ourselves in the details in archaeology. So we know every little bone we have, but we don't know the story we're going to tell with it so uh, easily. So I thought, they're not archaeological drawings, but I think they can make you wonder about uh, how you can use aesthetic drawings in archaeology. That we may want to wonder, where do we put our money? I mean, because it is a money issue, of course. If you catalogue all your nails, you can't make a drawing, uh, probably. So you have to make choices. And maybe sometimes it's good we, sh we start like less cataloguing everything and more visualising what we're doing. Because, I mean, these are the nails. There's a lot of them. And, I mean, really, that's all. If you say we have 352 <coughs> nails, or we just say we have a lot, that would be just as easy. But what you want to do is go outside of the context, so, so make the context wider. So it's not the objects that are just uh, what you want to talk about. You want to widen it into the, uh, the wider context. So this is the place, this is Rockburn. I named it myself, so it's a totally not official site name. But, uh, and you see it's just across the road. We had a little house, the house on the right, we lived in there for three months uh, as artist residency. <coughs> and this was the place in front of it. And if you look the other way, you see this beautiful view of the ocean. And um, then suddenly the whole context of the, the, the place uh, becomes known. And what it is, it is around the island, people would, because it's a little island, people would burn their stuff they don't need on the side of the ocean. And when you think of the island and you get the brochures, you get all these kinds of pictures. But when you look closer, <coughs> you get these kinds of pictures. Because what they do is burn everything at the border of the ocean, so there's a lot of junk or waste deposited in the ocean. And for them it's like a, a <coughs> known place, or, or a place where you... you <coughs> where the waste goes. If it's in the water, it's gone, sort of idea. But for us, as like Western, especially Dutch, we are very neat in our landscapes. And then suddenly you come there and everybody just is very proud of their island, very proud of the landscape, and they just chuck it all in the ocean. For us, that was like, a, oh, how can you do that? And um, But it's <coughs> sort of how they do things. So luckily, when we were there, I could also uh, witness the process, because it's more than just the details of the drawing, it's also the process you're interested in as archaeologists. So what 
it is that it, it's just like old uh, pellets. They're no longer used. They just chuck it on the rock, and then you get a beautiful fire. And we would see regularly, you could see, oh, there's a fire, oh, there's a fire. So it was not just an incidental uh, approach. It was really something that was inherent in the way people treated their waste in this uh, manner. But when you just look at treating the waste, it's, it's like, oh, uh, it's, it's like one process. But it's also a process of uh, remembrance. Cause on the other side, you see uh, Mr. Coffin, our neighbor, sitting next to the pile that he just lit. But it's also, he's sitting not just on any rock, he's sitting on the rock where his nephew used to sit, who died very young of a brain tumor. So for him, it was al always the place of his nephew. So it was, and his nephew liked to sit there, drink a beer, just one, he said. He was like not drinking heavily on the beach, but he was just having one beer, watch the fire and be happy. So for Mr. Coffin, this whole place had a whole other dimension as well, not just as waste, but as a place where his nephew used to sit. And Mr. Coffin used to live here for all his <coughs> life, but unfortunately he had to leave um, to move uh, last mo uh, last a few months ago, because uh, there's no health care on the island, really good health care for the elderly. So this is what you see after a burn. You see the wood is still there, but you see the nails already coming out of the burned wood. The objects are getting burned again, the iron objects that are there, but they stay basically in their place. And after a time, the charcoal will be swept away by the ocean because it's occasionally flooded. It's not constantly flooded, but when it's really high tide, it will flood. But also the rain will make the charcoal go away. And because the surface is hard, it will just go into the ocean. And the funny thing is, the first pictures I took were three years ago. And I had the fortune of going back this summer. And to my surprise, uh, the same arrangement was still there. The same fire. So it said something about... If you think about open air, how much uh, objects are going to remain there, <coughs> you think about, oh, that's going to move and going to be set aside, especially because it's so close to the ocean and you have occasional flooding. But I mean, it's just there. And you even see here a little spot, and th there's an object missing. I, I will be honest, I took it before I took the photograph. I didn't think about it, I just <laughs> thought, like, oh. I was quick, like, oh, I'm back in my spot. And I didn't have a car, so I couldn't go as much as I like. And I was like, oh, I'm going to pick a remembrance for me. Because I have also a museum of failure and unloved objects. So I thought, that's a good museum piece. But it's amazing how that has remained here on this spot for three years. And has not, not moved since I uh, came there. So this makes us our question all... Although it's an aesthetic drawing, aesthetic uh, photographs, at a certain point you can really think about <coughs> archaeological processes and what we think as important. So that was all for me. Hope you enjoyed.